Hey you guys, Nathan back with another video. I am in Photoscape X and I want to teach you guys how to blur an image. How to get that portrait mode effect, that bokeh blurry background in your photos. And this is something that I have I kind of just recently come up with this process, this method of how to do it. And a lot of it is thanks to Photoshop and their magic lasso tool and being able to you know select certain things take it out layering things like that and it's something that i never would have thought of before without the thanks of photoshop so i definitely am happy about that because oftentimes if you're wanting to add blur to a photo many times you're not doing it like on an automatic basis it's something where you are either relying on your phone or somebody else to add that blur and sometimes it messes up. But if you do it manually, it's like going over here to the tools tab, going down to blur, and then we'll zoom in here. And you know, we could blur out these numbers and you can you know make it uh, blurred. And you can, oh, I'm gonna go around the edges of the main subject of the photo and I'm gonna blur all that but the thing is it takes time it's gonna be messy but it's something where it's like hey if I at the end of the day want to be able to decide if I want it just a little bit of a blur or a ton of a blur you know I can make that decision but here is the method that I believe is superior if you are going to want full control over what you're blurring because I could decide to blur her face, I could decide to blur uh, the rest of her, I could decide to blur the background, I could decide to blur anything, where many times if it's automatically done for you, you're going to end up missing focus, and there's sometimes with limitations on your camera, you can't get that blurry background that you would love to see. So let me show you how I would do this, and then I have a few other photos as well. I have me holding uh, just a piece of tech, and we're going to blur the background on that. We have this one where we're going to uh, kind of blur. I haven't decided exactly what we're going to blur on this photo. But then I also have this one where we're going to blur uh, just everything past the car. Uh, and we might also blur the grass. I don't know. It's just kind of to show what can be done. So, all right. So we're back here with this photo. What we're going to do is we're actually going to drop it, grab the photo, Gonna drop it into the cutout uh, tab. And when we drop it into the cutout tab, this is different from the editor. It's over here to the cutout. And this is where you cut things out of an image. And in this case, I wanna cut out the background. I debated it, because you can do it either way. You can cut the person out, and then um, you could do that, or you could cut the background out. In my opinion, you want to be able to have the person cut out so you can reinsert the person back into the photo because then you could add a drop shadow on the person and all that. So I think that's uh, far superior in my opinion. So we're going to go in here. Um, of course, with this tool, let me just explain it real quick. This is the magic eraser tool. You just click on it, something and it's going to take that and then other colors that are similar to it and get that taken care of pretty quickly. So we're going to just click around in here, removing uh, the different parts of the photo that we don't want. All right. And now that took away too much. One thing that's neat is if you click and it takes away too much, you can grab this tolerance slider and maybe slide it back. And then we can get to a place where it's taking out a lot, but not taking her out. Of course, if you do accidentally take out a little too much, you can go into the brush and you can go and hit the restore and you can, uh, restore what got messed up or you can hit undo as well so uh, we're just gonna continue clicking around in here I want to make sure I'm zoomed out enough to be able to see if I'm removing anything crucial uh, I don't want to remove that much of her neck uh, okay that's much better okay back here Removing this removing that ooh do I want her glasses to also be removed I suppose I would because um, let me zoom in close so you guys can see it. Uh, as far as the frames on her glasses, ooh, it actually got a little bit of her eye. That would be that would be terrible. All right. Oh, whoa. And actually, there was some of her hat, so I don't want to remove that for sure. Okay. Nice. So we got that. Nice. Okay. All right. So yeah, it's just a process. It takes time. One thing to also do is you can just take the brush take it really large 
and just start cutting out a huge amount of the image can save you a ton of time all right and uh, just so you guys know I'm gonna take a little bit more time on this because I do want to show the proper way if you want to skip forward in the video I have timestamps down below also uh, those will be in the description but also if you'd like I also have a list of the different uh, products that I use to make these videos uh, whether it's my laptop camera uh, screen recording software or my mic uh, all those things can be found down below and that can be just kind of a helpful resource to you guys if you are looking to make tutorial videos as well uh, okay so we're getting a lot closer here magic eraser we're gonna erase this 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 okay I actually want to undo these because I want to turn the tolerance up so it does remove the entirety of it in just one click I don't want it to be wasting my time because that purple is a it's a pretty decent amount different than the background here okay that helped to really cut that down quickly one thing that's interesting is when you click um, I can zoom in real close here when I click on something you can then see like the individual pixels and everything and I've really appreciated that with uh, Photoscape X trying to do their best to uh, show exactly what's happening on screen when you are making those edits or changes uh, I really like that that's helpful for me to be able to know that I'm doing a precise job okay very good uh, getting some more of this nice also by the way you guys uh, my most recent video where I showed how to maybe work with blurred images try to bring back and sharpen some of those that can be such a hard thing to do but I definitely appreciated the opportunity to work with uh, that photo and try to get it in order but I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on if there's a better way in your opinion on how to make that photo even better um, but yeah sometimes trying to bring back a blurry photo can be just super super hard but I really enjoyed the video as well uh, but yeah definitely if you guys have any questions or any video ideas or any photos you guys would like me to edit feel free to send those over to me I have my business email uh, on my YouTube channel so you guys can find that in the about ooh, uh oh in the about tab so you guys can definitely check that out if you're interested um, so that's good all right kind of just really random what's over here one thing that's nice is because I'll be putting this back in the exact same place in the image I should be able to get away with uh, adding this extra blur okay nice okay so we got that taken care of okay I believe we have it pretty well taken care of we've removed all the different elements that we wanted to if I wanted to be like super picky I could like hop in and say oh man there's some some real light colored shades down here that I could remove but at some point you do have to you know finish editing a photo so all right perfect so we have that completed we're going to go over here and we're gonna hit save and in here we're gonna save as a PNG so that'll be good and then I'm gonna go and put it into the correct folder all right nice so we have that we're gonna go back to the editor all right so we have that saved gonna go back to the editor now this is where things get to be a lot of fun I'm gonna go over here to insert go to insert image and uh, we're gonna find our document in here uh, here we go here's our cutout okay score cut out so we have now inserted her back into the photo so that's pretty nice now what I can do here is I can uh, right click on here go to scale and there's a 100 so I can make sure it's the exact same scale I'm gonna zoom in super super close to make sure that what I have here is a pretty good match to exactly where it's supposed to be okay 
and one thing that's nice is if you have the image selected, you can use your arrow keys to just maneuver it like one. Let's see. Okay, I think we're going to I think we're going to lock it in right there. I think that's a good spot for it to go. So now, here is what's interesting. I can go and edit and when I'm editing, I'm editing just the background now. I'm also editing, you know, her, you know, the layer behind her, you know, that flat pane, but because I have this it's just independent of the rest of the edit. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to a film effect, I can change this and the film effect I actually have to select it and actually have to hit apply. But now the film effect has been applied to the background, but not to the foreground. It means that I can perfectly edit and alter the background of the image. Um, oh, this is nice because in color, you actually don't see the changes there. So the thing is, I can make those edits and changes without affecting the main subject. So. If for some reason you wanted that independence, I think that's so, so helpful at times. So I think that's really neat. But what also is cool, then I can go over here in the edit tab down to adjustments and click blur. And now I can blur the entire image, however I'd like to blur it. Because I can click blur and I can increase the blur and I can now blur everything except for her. And I can make those changes on if how much I want it blurred. So I could do it, uh, you know, none to a bit of a blur, a bit more of a blur. That's where you really start seeing it. And then it just gets blurred out like crazy from there. Also, one thing that's neat is that, um, and I can actually leave that blur on there, you guys. It might be helpful to be able to see the difference. So you have that blur on there. You can go over here as well when you uh, select the image that inserted image you can go and hit a drop shadow on the individual a um something where i can make a shadow on there if i feel like that's helpful as well um and you can of course change the colors and everything like that but it's neat to be able to have that kind of control and everything there you can also gradient but uh, that's for another video all right so i think that's super cool to be able to just be able to add more blur to an image without having to um, without having to do a ton of super craziness with it. Let's zoom in close and see what it looks like close up. You can see that, yes, it is. Um, ooh, you know one thing that is kind of unfortunate, though? You know what's kind of unfortunate about this? I was looking at it, and this is kind of a drawback to the idea, actually, because the image is blurred. Because she's still in the background of this image, that blur is still actually, uh, when the blur happens, it is blurring the background as well. So that means, like, the colors in her hat, in her shirt or something, is pushing out as well, um, is being blurred out as well. So you actually do get this kind of, glow effect that I was not intending to have in the photo, um, which is unfortunate. So that means that blur actually ends up looking less professional because you automatically are getting some kind of a halo effect from it. Arg, unfortunate. So that means if you wanted to do it actually like super correct, what you would basically have to do is there like a like a perfect invert button? Oh wait, look. Oh you guys, here is cool. This is cool. This is the stuff you learn on the fly. Okay, there's an invert mask button down here. That is right. I can invert mask, therefore I can get the background and not her. Oh boy, you guys. I'm so glad I didn't close out of this cutout tab. So I can go back into here. Go to the PNG. I can do cutout. I'm gonna do a V2 just so I am not going to accidentally. Uh, paste over what I did in here. Okay, so then close out of that. Go back to my editor. So now I'm going to close out of this completely. Don't want this anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start with this image. It's the image, but she is out of the image. This is transparent background in the middle there. It's a PNG image. This is going to work good. 
Next, I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to insert image. Okay. Then I'm going to insert her back into the photo, line it up, and this shouldn't be too hard because it's going to be grayed out. So it should be real simple to, to move around in here. Okay, I should check at the bottom because that also might be a place where it's pretty easy to see because this will line me up on the bottom pretty easily. And I'll just go over... Okay, I think we're good. All right, so we have that there. Now, one thing, if you didn't know if you, well, there's, there's drawbacks because you could increase the size to maybe cover over that hole if you couldn't get it lined up exactly perfectly. The only problem is sometimes enlarging it actually doesn't help because then maybe, like, if you were trying to cover it, it's like different parts of her hair ends up coming, uh, different parts of her hair ends up showing a bit, different things like that. Okay, so let's back it up. We have it lined up. Now, this background is still the main image that is editable um, and fully manipulated, able to be manipulated. All right, so here we go. We can go over and hit blur, and then we can blur it. Ah, oh no, you guys. We still have a bit of a problem. The problem is that at least I believe the problem is we're still getting a bit of a halo effect like that that dark that uh, transparent part is actually being blurred into the photo as well ah yeah yeah okay is there a different type of blur that I'm need to find in here mmm okay yeah there's like five different types of blur that you can kind of mess around with all right, so we're going to see if that's helpful. This uh, blur is taking forever, though. It must be a very either uh, it's uh, bilinear blur. Okay. This is going to take forever. It kind of looks good. I don't know. Um, not sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't look all that great to me, personally. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so what is another option? <laughs> all right, trying to fix this yet again. Here's one thing you could do. You could go to the Draw tool. Go to the Draw tool. Go to uh, Select a Color. And you can select like the color right next to there. And what I can do is I can just basically draw in. I'm going to just draw in here and I can increase the strength as well because um, I'm going to just draw in what colors would actually be in oh no oh but I can't go outside of that oh man because if I go outside of it I'm editing that as well erg so I'd have to like draw on the inside uh, but then it's still going to leave a somewhat of a shadowing erg Maybe using this for blur isn't as good. Hmm. Because even if you were to do that and you line the person up, and you end up putting the blur in there. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Because that blur still ends up happening. I don't know, you guys. Maybe it's me being a bit of a perfectionist. Definitely, you can do it. I can definitely showcase that, yes, you can. But there are different haloing effects that are kind of unfortunate. Now, you could increase the size of the individual or something. And maybe there's ways that you can, like, cover that up. But, man, I, I just really, I really hate that I can't seem to figure out how to make this work really good. Um... But yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of what I was trying to do, uh, trying to figure out. Um, one thing that is helpful is that um, let's say you were doing this, or if you're messing with it and you're still wanting to continue to do more with the image, 
one thing that I would recommend you checking out uh, is being able to go in and put those different film effects in to the image, um, being able to apply that, and then it applies to the background, not the foreground. It's something where if you wanted to do a hue or temperature shift to be more purple or something, you can do it without messing up her skin tones or anything like that. So you guys, um, this video kind of went as planned. Uh, okay, fine, not really as planned, but that's kind of what I was thinking as far as how to blur your background. You can get that portrait effect, but it's not perfect. I'll have to mess around with it in Photoshop to see if it's possible to do that. I just don't. I just didn't think that uh, this uh, cutout, that with it being cut out, that it would still give some kind of a haloing effect when you blur. So you guys, hopefully this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you all in the next one. And take it easy. Bye.